Okay, there's been a lot in this chapter between exponentials and logs. It gets pretty confusing. So this last video, I'm not really going to add any new information. I'm just going to try and help you get over one of the most common mistakes in exponentials and logs graphing, and that is switching the two up, like mixing them up. Because the problem is that since both these are in the same chapter, you're always going to see them on the same tests and quizzes. And so you're going to look at something that will be like, they'll tell you to graph a log function. It'll tell you to graph an exponential function. And you'll have to figure out right on the spot, like, which is which. Or in some tests, they'll give you the graph, and they'll ask you to come up with the equation. So you've got to be really good at spotting, like, oh, which graph goes with which equation. And, and if there's some XY flips and stuff, like they've inverted them or flipped them sideways, then they can get pretty confusing about which is which. So I just want to make a little grab bag here of the you know, most identifiable aspects of these things, just to keep you on the right foot. All right, so the key thing about exponentials is a horizontal asymptote, whereas logs have a vertical asymptote. That's the number one thing you don't want to mess up, and it's the easiest thing to not mess up. Because if you're always just like, exponentials have a horizontal asymptote, no ifs, ands, or buts, no matter how many times you flip them or switch them, whatever, shift them around, there's always a horizontal asymptote. And for logs, it's always vertical, no matter what you do. Even if it ends up being flipped and it comes off to the left instead of right and all that kind of junk, it's still going to be a vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote on the log is going to get shifted by whatever the x shift is. So if there's like a shift right of 2 in the problem, or a left shift of 2, the vertical asymptote moves left and right. But of course, a vertical shift does not affect an asymptote. Because if you're already a tall, skinny line that's, you know, infinitely long, it doesn't matter if you go up to, you're still infinitely long, go all the way top, up and down. So the horizontal shift is all that matters for the asymptote on the, on the logs, whereas in exponentials, the vertical shift is all that matters. Because that's what's going to shift the, exp the uh, horizontal asymptote up and down. Left, right shift won't affect the asymptote. What does matter, though, when you're shifting around is that key point. So the key point on this one is going to be 0, 1. The key point on logs is going to be 1, 0. That seems like it would be confusing. It's like, oh, 1 before 0 or 0 before 1. Seems like you'd have to memorize it to be tricky. But the funny thing is that these each only have one intercept. The exponential, since it comes in along the x-axis, there's a horizontal asymptote, it's never going to hit anything but the y-axis. So just know that whenever one of these things crosses an axis, it should be at 1, unless there's some kind of shift or whatever. But that helps you remember this. Now I would encourage you whenever you're graphing these to just draw, you know, in a corner of the paper, just draw the parent function before you graph the real thing. That should be one of your steps is to like actually look at the parent function. So you can just take, oh, it's got a key point here, but then you look at your problem and say, oh, there's up three and over three. So you know that this key point needs to move up three and over three or something. So just work from the parent function always. Keep track of this stuff and you should be okay. And just as a, rem a reminder, the domain of exponentials is all real numbers. Whereas you cannot take the log of 0 or a negative number. So that's why the domain is only x is greater than 0 for logs. And because these things are inverses of each other, log and exponentials are inverses, that's why the domain and range just flip between the two. So greater than 0 for the range of this one is the domain of the other one. And all real numbers for the domain of this guy, all real numbers for the range of this guy. Memorize this chart, do a screenshot, print it out, whatever. Good stuff. All right, so let's just try graphing this based on what I just told you. We've got an exponential, because there's an x upstairs, upstairs in the exponent. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote. So let's take a look at what our shifts are. It looks like we have a lateral shift of 2, and it's right, based on our all transformation chapter stuff. And then there's no vertical shift. So what does that mean? That means my horizontal asymptote is going to stay exactly where it should have been which is the x-axis. Now my paragraph would have gone through this point, right? Because every exponential goes through 0, 1. So that's kind of my paragraph. I could sketch it in lightly here just to see what it looks like. But since I'm shifting right to, that means my key point is also going to shift right to. So it's going to go, and now my key point's going to be right there. So once again, now I'm going to draw the function for real, but I'm just going to wait a little longer and come up through that key point. Oops. <laughs> I missed it by a tiny bit. Ah! Well, let's make it bigger. Point it, and so what is that point? No magic here. I'm just gonna gra I'm just gonna literally look at the coordinates, and it looks like we got x equals two, and then y equals one. A lot of teachers, if they want you to graph something, they'll make you give them the equation of the asymptote, which is be y equals zero. They might make you do another point too, but guess how we get another point? We just plug in another number for x. So if this was two comma one, let's try plugging in three for x. 5 to the 3 minus 2 is 5 to 1, so that would be 3, 
comma five. So this might have been a little bit more vertical than I drew it, but hey, what the heck, you know? It's all good. So that maybe three five would have been up here. Point is though, just plug in points. You know, when in doubt, plug in points, especially on exponentials where it's so easy to plug in points. Here's a log example. So first things first, let's figure out any shifts we got. Looks like we have a left, I mean a right three, and we have an up two. So the first thing I need to worry about is, hey, you know, what would my parent function have been? So a log, it had a vertical asymptote here, and it went through this key point, and it kind of went up like that, and shot sideways. All right, so let's see what this is gonna do. We're shifting it right three and up two. So the first thing I notice is my asymptote is gonna move, because a lateral shift will affect my asymptote. So my new asymptote, instead of being at zero, is gonna be at three. So that's my new asymptote. And then my key point is gonna move right three and up two, because everything shifts right three and up two. So right sh this key point goes one, two, three, over to four, and it goes up two, dink, dunk. So there's my key point. Now you might be confused what I would do with that key point. Well, logs always shoot up along their vertical asymptote, and then they kick through the key point and turn sideways. So there you go, that must be the graph. There's no flips or anything to worry about. If you really had to, so we definitely want to label this point, but I'm just going to pull it off the graph. It looks like we're at one, two, three, four, comma two. And if you really need another point, the trick on logs is to go up one and then over whatever the base is from the asymptote. So since this is a base 10, that would mean we go up to y equals three and we'll be over at the asymptote, which is three plus 10, which is 13. So somewhere way over here, we're going to have a point 13. And you probably can't see that. 13 comma three or something. Way off to the right. Should have left myself more room. But of course you will on the test. All right, so I just wanna show you a couple of confusing problems. These, aren't, these graphs aren't gonna look like each other. They're just gonna look like they might be the other thing. So I'll show you how to mess these up. Because the flips is really what makes these bad. If you have a normal exponential, people usually realize that's an exponential. If you have normal log, a little dice here, but people can usually spot those pretty well. The thing is that when you start flipping things, all of a sudden they start looking like the other guy. So let's take a look at this one. It's a log, which means it has a vertical asymptote. So what I should be thinking is, hey, log, vertical asymptote, and because there's no horizontal shift, it's gonna be a vertical asymptote here. So I wanna lock that in early, because the easiest thing to mess up, and the thing that I see confu um, students confuse the most often is which type of asymptote they have. Or God forbid they put two asymptotes in the same problem, but Remember, either log or exponential, they both only have one asymptote, either horizontal or vertical, never both. And this thing does have an upshift of one. So there's a flip. Now I'm gonna encourage you to do the flips first. So my parent function would have gone through right here, but then it has a vertical flip, which means it's gonna come out of the north and cross like that, but then it's shifted up one. So this key point that was at one comma zero needs to go up one. Boom, it's right there at um, one comma one. And now we're just gonna draw in our thing. Now at this point, sometimes students will be like, they don't know anything, but because we just figured out that the flip already resulted in this declining thing, we're just gonna do that same thing, only instead of cutting through one comma zero, we're gonna cut through one comma one. Now here's where everybody makes the mistake. Because they're coming down out of the sky and they're kind of leveling off all of a sudden, a lot of times you'll see students do this. 